we're back in these cool setups. Basically, if you're new to my channel, I'll oh, wait, hold on, intros, yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's me, Maddie, and welcome back to another chill video. Basically, I've done one of these before, and I talked about books that I've got like an itch to read, but probably won't read Zoom because, well, that's me. And today I'm back with another one where I just grab a camera, set it up on my bookcase, and we talk about books. And today, um, it's late at night, it's almost, it's probably past 10 now, I'm doing a video where I do some five-star predictions, and now I don't normally do five star predictions because it takes a lot to get a five star out of me nowadays but <laughs> I have a few books that I think I'm going to give five stars and I want to talk about them before I read them and then we can check up and see whether or not I did give them a five out of five stars okay so fair warning um I don't know much about these books <laughs> I only know, like, I might read, like, a synopsis once or twice uh, before I buy a book and then put it to my shelf. Or I'll just, like, listen to somebody on BookTube and talk about the, a, the same book over and over again. I'm like, hey. That sounds good. So here we are. I think I'm only going to do, like, three or something. I don't know. I'm just going to grab books off the shelf, you know? So, let's get into this before my battery dies. So the first book I think I'm going to give a 5 out of 5 stars is From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have heard nothing but amazing things from this. Everybody I follow has given this, like who I'm friends with on Goodreads has given this 5 out of 5 stars. Like they say this is amazing. And the back says it's for it's perfect for fans of Sarah J. Mass and Laura and Laura Talasa. I think I have a Laura Talasa book on my TBR, but I'm not too sure. But I think I'm going to like this because it's for fans of Sarah J. Mass, and I do like Sarah J. Mass, even though I'm no longer, longer supporting her, I'm not going to lie. I like Sarah J. Mass, okay? Um, but I don't really know what this is about. All I know is that there's kind of like a Rye Sand, a Rhee Sand character, uh, and his name's Hawk. So that's kind of all I know about it. Um... But I've heard that this book is great and that the next book is even better than this book somehow. So, I don't know much about it, but I think I'm going to give it 5 out of 5 stars mainly because it says her fans of Sarah J. Mass. And even though I don't give every Sarah J. Mass book 5 out of 5 stars, especially her most recent ones, I think this has a very good chance of being a 5 out of 5. And especially like one of my favorite books of all time. So the, another book I think I'm going to give 5 out of 5 stars is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Now, I don't know what this is about, okay? I've never even read the description. Between life and death, there is a library. Up until now, Nora Seed's life has been full of misery and regret. She feels she has let everybody down, including herself. But things are about to change. When she finds herself in the Midnight Library, she has a chance to make things right. The books in the Midnight Library enable Nora to live as if she's done things differently. Each one contains a different life, a possible world in which she had made different choices that played out in an infinite number of ways, affecting everything she knew, as well as people she never met. With the help of an old friend, she can now undo every decision she regrets as she tries to work out her perfect life, but things aren't always what she imagined they'd be, and her choices play... And soon her choices place the library and herself in extreme danger. But time, before time runs out, she must answer the ultimate question. What is the best way to live? Okay, I just thought we were go this was going to be a sad book where this main character, who I don't even know the name of, experienced all the life she could have lived. Okay, and she is going to experience all the life she could have lived. But it seems like there's more to the story than I thought. Okay, um, I've never, I think this is like a literary fiction. I've never read a literary fiction, uh, but I saw uh, Emily Fox. I think that's her last name, and she posted a review and said that the author called this book a woman who goes back and experiences all the life she couldn't have lived. And I was like, that sounds pretty good. So I'm really hoping that I like this, especially because I bought it in hardcover. I don't usually do that. Most of my books are paperback because they're really, they're cheaper. Uh, but yeah, this is in hardcover, and I just... I really hope this makes me sad, okay? I like to cry while I read. I look ridiculous while I'm crying while I read, but 
I like to cry while I read. So there we go. Okay, so then I have a few middle grades that I don't really know for sure. And at the time of filming this, this is not going up. Anytime soon to filming this, it's going to be like edited and just like in my backlist. Uh, probably going up sometime in like November, early December. But I know I'm going to read these by the time these, this video comes out. But some books I th are going to be like a hit or miss is Hollow Pox by Jessica Townsend. I've given the first two books in the series 5 out of 5 stars. I don't know why this one wouldn't be a 5 out of 5. And then Unlocked by Shannon Messenger. I gave the first book, the fifth book, and the seventh book a 5 out of 5 stars. So I'm kind of due for another 5 out of 5. If you look at fifth... I didn't like 6, I liked 7, I didn't like the 8th one. I think I'm on like book 8.5, especially because Keefe's point of view is in it, you know? You know what I mean? So, yeah. And another one that I actually own is Maya and the Rising Dark by Rona Barron. Uh, her first book, which is Kingdom of Souls, I gave a 4.5 the first time I read it, but now I think it's more of like a 4 star because... Um, I predicted the ending, and this one can either be like a 5 out of 5 or like a 3. I don't know what way this one's gonna go. Like, Hollow Pox, out of all these middle grades, Hollow Pox has the highest point of being a 5 out of 5. Uh, but I don't know where any of these other ones are gonna go. So, there we go. There's that. Ooh, hold on real quick. I haven't read the third Percy Jackson book, but I feel like either the fourth book or the fifth book. Don't worry, Mom, that was just a book. I'm going to give five out of five stars. I don't know why, but I feel like people say these are like the best books in the series, so I love the first one currently reading the second book as I'm talking, as I'm filming this, uh, so these are the other possible, one of these, five out of five, maybe both, I don't know, we'll have to see, all right, roll the outro now, <coughs> promise it's not sped up, I just talked way too fast. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys liked it. I know it's crazy. Didn't really have any plans. If I had to pick specific ones, I think I'd give 5 out of 5. Midnight Library and From Blood and Ash are really the only ones I think that could get a 5 out of 5. And Hollow Pox, possibly, because I have really good track record with the Nevermore series. The other ones I threw on here to buff out the video, and you can't be mad at me for that. So... Anyway, like I said, I'm going to go. I love you all so very much. Thank you guys so much for watching these videos. I enjoy doing them. So if you have any other quick, random type videos you want to see, I just grab my camera and film whenever I'm in the mood for them. So, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go. love you all so very much. I'm going to see you guys on the next video. Continue to know episodes every single one. Also, guys, I'll next Monday for another video. And hit notification. I'm still a freaking bulldozer. Bye, everybody. Wow. Fastest I've ever done that before.